Brethren, praise God uh, for this session. We thank God. We shall forever be grateful to God for his mercies. His mercies that are new every morning. Now, in this episode, we dive into a scripture that talks about another lady of impact, another woman of influence. And this woman is the popular Esther. In Hebrew, was called Hadassah. Let us pray and thank God. Father God in heaven, thank you that you have provided for us examples from this word. And pray that we bless it, you bless us as we think through that you may be impacted for your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, we keep reading about biblical figures for our energizement, for our, you know, for, for our refreshment for our you know our growth for our empowerment and until you dive deeper into these scriptures that will be encouraged because these people that we're talking about were human beings like we are if there were men they were like you know they were men of blood and flesh if there were women they were men of blood and flesh but they they have examples and so the Bible is full of the figures that will impact you directly. And when you read it, you pick lessons from them. But also there were those that were negative examples. Now we're talking about the women of impact, these last series that we've been having, the women of influence that influence us in our, you know, our relationship with God. But also there were those that actually the, their impact was negative, but also pick lessons from them. Like a woman like Jezebel was, you know, was a queen of some, of some sorts. But her lifestyle, you know, was not a good example to pick. But for, of course, for believers, we pick something from them and several others that were evil women in the Bible. But now this picture that we pick from the women of impact like Esther, like, you know, we talked about Miriam, we talked about, you know, uh, you know um, we have other women like Ruth, name them, a woman like Hannah. Now those ones impact us directly and we pick lessons from them. Now here... We talk about the woman Esther, very, very popular woman, and she has a full book uh, in the Bible, and um, Esther belongs to the Jewish uh, nation. She was a Jewish because she was a woman, and the story has it that she was brought up by her, um, her cousin. Uh, the Bible talks about another character in this book called Mordecai. Now, Mordecai is one of them. And now, another character which is, who is very, very, very key is the Persian king at that time called Ahasuerus. And some other versions call, I mean, his other name was Zaxaxes. And it is a complicated name for very many people. You mention Ahasuerus, mention Zaxaxes. And we have another character in the book mentioned as the prime minister at the time who was a very, very influential man called Haman, who was the chief enemy to the people of, uh, of, of uh, to the Jews, to the Israelites. And then, uh, of course, actually, another character is the queen whom Esther replaced in, um, the, in the palace, in the Hasuerus' palace, and the queen was called Vashut. And now, having mentioned these characters and several others, of course, that I may not be able to mention now because of time, but the issue is Esther was a lady, you know, circumstances dictated and God's will happens that our destination, our destiny, God knows it from the very beginning. She lost her parents and so says the Bible. And the person that comes in to adopt Esther is called Mordecai. Mordecai was a cousin um, to Esther. Of course, like some other people call, uh, some other, you'll find some other literatures uh, calling uh, Mordecai as Esther's uncle. But she was brought up by a relative because her parents had died when she was a small girl. And at the time that the, all this happens, this, the, the group of Jews were not at home, were not in the Jewish land. They were, they were scattered elsewhere. And the kingdom that we talk about is called the Persian kingdom. And so they were in diaspora. They were in diaspora, call them the people that were abroad 
uh, staying away from the Jewish land. And so Persia, at that time, the kingdom was the world power. Of course, we have had world powers. People come, I mean, nations come and conquer others, and they become world powers. And then this time, it's Persia. You remember at one time, it was Babylon. At another time, it the Romans. When Jesus was born, it was the Roman, the Roman Empire that was. And so we have this history. And for me, as a human being, of course, we're people of history, and we keep you know, looking back, and they impact us very, very much. And one thing that actually I pick from this is that all these people were human beings as we are. But God, by his own design, puts them up so that, and they were written about, so that actually we pick lessons to be encouraged so that we move our journey of faith. So Esther, at this time, um, comes up and by divine providence, she comes into limelight. And the Bible, I mean, he's called Esther because the meaning of Esther is star, the beauty. She was a young, lovely lady. And she falls into, um, you know, the line of those girls that from among whom the king might choose another queen. And by divine providence, the position, the place where she was put with very many other girls, she had divine favor upon her. And she was in the hands of the eunuchs. A eunuch is someone, is the king's servant, male servant, who is put in charge of the king's uh, uh, affairs, but they were castrated men. Um, of course, that's why they are called eunuchs. So the eunuchs under whom Esther was put, they were God-fearing men, they were good, they were loving, they were warm-hearted men, and they helped Esther to meet the standards of the queen in the palace at that time. And so it was at a time, at that time when Haman, the man that I've talked about, when you read this book, you'll find this story, Haman was the, at the helm of uh, every affairs of the, of the Jews. Um, some other literature called him a prime minister. And so it was at this time that actually the Jews were facing uh, annihilation. They were going to be destroyed and they were in a danger. Their lives were in danger and Haman was determined. Haman was purposed to influence the king to say that actually all the people of Israel I mean, the Jews at that time could be annihilated. And so it was by Esther that this catastrophe of, you know, of annihilation, this catastrophe, catastrophe of, of, of being, you know, of being cleared from the face of the earth at that time was averted. Esther played a huge, huge role. The reason why we get interested um, that um, Esther, Hadassah, I mean, a woman, in a male-dominated culture, and she comes out and becomes the savior of God's people. And of course, actually, God uses human beings to reach out to others. Of course, okay, we have looked at some other figures like Moses. We looked at other, some other figures like Joshua. Yes, the men. We have looked at some other women that you can look at: Deborah, Jair. All those women were women of influence, and all these people played a huge role in the lives of the people of God. And so Esther here averted the catastrophe that was going to be uh, to befall the people of Israel. And the Bible does mention that actually the chief architect of the annihilation, Haman, the prime minister at that time, of course things turned round and he was the one who was hanging instead. Now Esther appears as a woman full of courage. Esther appears as a woman full of piety, to be pious before God. She appears to be a woman full of faith. Because when you read this story, I just want to encourage us to just pick your Bible and read Esther chapter 1 up to the last chapter. It's a readable, it's a readable, it's a manageable book. Just read. And you'll find actually she was full of faith, she was full of piety, she was full of courage. But above all also, Esther was the love of her nation. These days we hear about the subject of patriotism, people loving their nation. Now Esther was a patriotic person because she loved it. And we are called upon to love our nation, the spirit of, nation, of nationalism within Esther, a woman. And therefore she was, uh, we pick, find her as a woman who was resolute. She was determined. 
and in our generation, we wish to find people that are resolute, people that are determined, but with the piety, but with the courage, but with the faith, but with patriotism. Uganda needs them. The world over needs this kind of people. Now, this woman, dutiful, duty, she was full of duty, and a Jewish daughter that accepted to be brought up by her cousin, Mordecai, and for the sake of the Jews, she takes up responsibility upon herself to say that the nation of Israel is not inherited. Remember, the other women that we have talked about, do you remember Jehobed? Jehobed, the mother of Moses, what she did, trying to hide her baby by the river, and God is by divine providence, the nation of Israel has to be saved. Do you remember Miriam? Now, these women are our huge lesson. Esther here under Mordecai leaves us huge lessons. And so she was an instrument used to save the Jews who were in danger at this time. Reading through these Bible pages, and God provides that Vashut dishonors her husband, disobeys her husband. And so in chapter 2, things turned and the king's anger rose against Vashut and there was a selection process. Which selection process? Esther succeeded. Read chapter 2 about Vashut's successor, how it was done. And then in chapter 2 verse 17, Esther is the one that becomes the king. And the roles that the man Mordecai played in the salvation story here. And Haman's plots and name of them. So you read this. But one thing that actually I find from here, which stands out, is this woman full of faith, full of piety, full of courage, full of patriotism, the love of her nation. She was selfless and she was dutiful and she was resolute for the work that she was to do for the Jews. Now, ladies and gentlemen, friends, she was focused and given an opportunity at a banquet. Things worked out as we'll be reading that. Now, she was one. She was, respect, she was respectful to her mentor, Mordecai. She listened to him. It's a virtue that many people miss out. Being a listener, being dutiful, being mentorable. There are some people whom you, can, you may want to teach, but they're not teachable. There are some people whom you may want to mentor, but they are not mentorable. Now, Esther gives us an example that when there is an opportunity to be mentored, may God give us the grace to be humble enough, to be meek, and so that we listen and you never know what God may be doing through that mentorship program that someone is giving you. Now, Esther was mentored by Mordecai and she became you know, the savior of her people when she was able to be made queen and that was the salvation of the people of, of God. So be mentorable. Allow someone, allow people of God who have virtues to give you those virtues, to instill them into you and so that other, some other person can, be, can benefit. My slogan still stands out. Blessed to bless. Encouraged to encourage taught to teach. And these are things that actually God you know, endows us so that through us some other people can be blessed. And this is the message that was given to Abraham, that through you all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. And so friends, in this Finding God series, we desire that actually God blesses us. Like Esther here was mentored and she became a blessing to the people of Israel. And she was a discerning lady, the deep thinker, and she won everyone's heart. Now, this lady whom we're talking about is very, very important, a discerning. Now, discernment is what is a virtue that has disappeared from very, very, many people's lives. Now, you need to be a discerning person. You need to be a thinker, foresee things that may bring, may be valuable, 
voice things that may be may be helpful to some other people. Now Esther was discerning, and when you read chapter two, you'll find all these things, these virtues coming out very, very clearly. And she was bold. When she appeared in the king's palace, when, you know, there was imminent danger. Because until the Bible says that until the king would show you favor by pointing his scepter towards you to welcome you. Otherwise, would be killed. Now, Esther, in her boldness, took a step and she went to the courtyard of the king. Read this Bible and you'll see how daring the woman was. And the daring people, we need them in the spirituality. Daring men, we need them in the church. Daring women, we need them. Now, David was another daring person. And there's a book that I translated that David, the daring. And you need, you know, there are certain things actually that you may not, uh, you may not do by yourself, but God is the one who gives you the grace. And so she was bold. Uh, she appeared before the king. And so choosing to do that because it was right, it was God given an opportunity for her to do that. And the Bible asks a prudent wife who can find a prudent woman who can find. And so Esther was prudent. And when you read chapter five following, you will see that she never rushed things. She went step by step. Remember, there were banquets that was prepared and she requested the king to come for once. And then another time. You see that? She never rushed. I want to pray for the women, never to rush things. I want to pray for the men, never to rush things. Now, there was a song that used to be that think before you act. And so Esther never rushed things. She was full of wisdom and discretion. And so step by step, things work out. And so from this first episode, I mean, of episode of Esther, I just want to tell you, I just want to ask you that never rush things. Be a discerning person and be a respectful person. Be mentored. Never stay alone. Have somebody to help you, even if you are mature, even if you are big, even if, but have your business associates, have colleagues. Have your pastors, have your clergy, and even as clergy, we need to have people that you know that will speak to us, that will mentor us as well. And God will join us together and being mentored, being taught, being blessed, we get out and bless others. So Esther leaves us a huge lesson, and God works out things mightily. He worked through this young lady, Esther, and in Hebrew, she is called Hadassah. And may God who was with Esther be with you. And may God who taught Esther teach you. And in the next episode, I will mention something about the name of God not being in the book of Esther. And you'll see the reason why it happened so, but it is eventful. It is actually, it's a lesson that we pick that God works through human beings and he may work through you to bring salvation to your family. Esther was used to bring salvation to the nation of Israel and may God work through you, whoever you are, male, female, young, old, to bring salvation to your family. God brought salvation to the people. Esther brought salvation to the people of Israel through her daring acts, through her meekness, simplicity. Now be simple and may God bless you to become a blessing to another person in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <music>